grow from week to week. For those of us who don't know me, I'm Shivani Sinarain. And today I'm just here to have a quick discussion, a lunch and learn on Excel for business analytics. So welcome to those of us who are attending right now. You know, I'm looking at some of the names, some familiar names to me. Some names I've seen week to week, Tuesday, every Tuesday. You know, and, and really being part of this great conversation, you know, a lovely conversation as we go week to week on, on lunchtime learning. Just such a good time to share lunchtime learning. So be before we start, um, and you know, I have a couple of formulas and a couple of things to share in Excel. Before we start, could I could I at least ask a few questions? My first question is uh you could type it in the chat, you could open your mic, anything, you know. How many of us use Microsoft Excel on a daily basis? So, or if not on a daily basis, that you use Microsoft Excel? How many use Excel? So Pat, I'm seeing Pat in the conversation here. I'm seeing um, Nakisha. Yeah. How many of us use it? Seeing Joshelle coming in. How many of us use it? All right. So you use it daily, Nakisha. Right. So you use it daily. What do you use it for? What do you use it for? When you say you use it daily, what, what do you do with it? Not that often, Justin, right? Not that often, right? So yeah, yeah, Nakisha, what, what do you use it for? Or how do you use it for? You use it occasionally? Well, I, would use it, um, I would use it for, I work in a project management section, so I would use it for managing our projects, calculating completion and monitoring the status of jobs. So you use it quite a lot then if you use it for projects. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. All right. Joshelle, what about you? You use Excel? What do, what do you do with Excel? Um, yeah, I use it. Uh, well, I used to use it. I just need a little refresher on it. <clears throat> That's why I joined in today. But like Great. for project management as well, risk as well, um, those kind of things. So I've seen a question, Excel, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Excel. That's the tool that we're going to use, right? Okay. So Excel is a powerful tool. It's a tool that can be used for data analytics. And we want to understand what really is data analytics. And as I, I'll, I'll show Excel just now and just do a few examples. But what is data analytics? In business right now, in business, persons have all of this data data you have to enter data and you want to know you know you want to know probably if you're in a sales company you want to know um what 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 is the best sale you know who's who's selling the most there's a kind of data that you might want um you might want to say okay well i'm selling pencils i'm selling a hundred pencils every month probably i could invest more in that so that's the type, that's data, right? That's data, having data. And when you have the data, you'll be able to analyze it better. Now you have in Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Excel is a tool that you know that can use um, for analytics. There may be a lot of arguments on that one. And one might say, well, Excel can really do analytics. What about Power BI, Business Intelligence? What about Tableau? And I would say, yes, all of these are excellent tools. But if you don't have um, BI and you don't have Tableau, could Excel have some features in it that can work? And I say yes all the time. Now, the main difference between Microsoft Excel for analytics and Power BI for analytics is that Power BI will be for much, much larger data sets. When you have loads and loads of data and you, Excel will not, Excel will only go to about a million rows, which is a lot. But I mean, for major organizations that have much more data, because a million rows may not, may not be anything, you, know, you might need more than that. Of course, we have worked in many different areas that um, a million rows is not enough. You need much more rows in order to get the data sets. So that's where business intelligence will come in, which is the BI, or you could use Tableau. However, Excel got a lot of features that will work for a lot of people so it's an excellent tool to show that you have data you have this data set and you want to be able to determine further 
how do you make business decisions? You make business decisions based on data. And that's something that everybody needs to understand. If you do not have, first of all, you must have the data, right? And then you'll be able to analyze it. Then you'll be able to make a decision. So like, um, you know, Nikisha, you talk here in projects. So I always talk about everybody who knows me in a project management capacity will know that I speak. You must have data gathering. You must have data analysis. You must have data representation. And then you must have data decision making. So the process for any tool. So we want to start this conversation by saying, don't jump into a tool unless you know what you want. You want to be able to do what? You want to be able to, um, to have data to analyze and make certain business decisions. That's what you want to do. As we said, garbage in, garbage out. If you do not have, all right, if you do not have the data, you can't make any decision. That's, that's, that's business 101 or data 101. You need to have the data and then you'll be able to use a tool to answer some questions to make decisions. So as we start this conversation or we continue the convo, we want everybody to understand it is data gathering, data analysis, data representation, and then you have decision making. So data gathering is where you have to have some tool that you, you're gonna put all the, the data in and data is raw, raw data, whatever data it is. And then you must have some tool to analyze it. And Excel can do both. Excel can have the, uh, the, the spreadsheet where you enter everything. And then after you enter it, you must be able to analyze it using certain formulas, using certain functions, using certain graphs, charts. And then you have, when you get this data, what do you do with it? You have to represent it. And this is where you could have dashboards and all of that, right? And after you represent it, because representation means you need to print something to show me as a manager to know, hey, this is, this is what your business is about, your business failing with using this type of products. Then we would say, okay, we can't do that. We, we need to make a decision. What is the decision? We're going to drop this line or we're going to have to spend more money this month in this product. That's business anal analytics from a data perspective with Microsoft Excel. It's a tool. But as we keep saying, garbage in, garbage out. So data analytics is the buzzword, as you all know. It is the buzzword. Everybody keep hearing about analytics and analytics and analytics. Because you need this type of mindset, an analytical mindset, to make better decisions. That's what we have to remember, to make better decisions. So data analytics using Microsoft Excel. Wonderful features. Of course, we have different tools. We have Power BI, Business Intelligence, and we have Tableau, excellent tools. You might say, but why not use BI? Business BI is more for business intelligence, which is something a little more than data analytics. However, if you have data sets that are really, really, really large information, more than a million rows, Excel will not cut it. You will have to go to um, BI or even Tableau. But for now, I'm sure. Sure, majority of us could work with Excel. So I'm going to ask for a volunteer, right? Who's going to help me to type up something? Right, let me see. Who's going to jump to it to help me to type up to show a formula? All right, Laverne, Justin, Joshelle, anybody? Don't worry, I'll walk you through what to do, you know. You're just typing it up in Excel. That's all you're doing. You're typing it up in Excel. Pat, you volunteer? No, no. My hands are tied now. I'm, I'm holding a baby. Oh, but you're listening. Okay. Yes, I'm listening. Yes. All right. Anyone? Joshelle, what about you? No, you sung as if you were on the road. Lakeisha? You're behind a computer that you could do it? Uh, no, I'm actually in my car on my phone. Okay. All right. Well, I'll do it. Dora. What about AJ? Oh, Laverne, Justin. Calling out everybody. I would like to help Shivani, but unfortunately, I'm on my phone as well. <laughs> All right. So I'll do it. Don't worry. 
I'll share the screen. I was hoping that um that I don't have to share it, but that's all right. Where's my Excel now? My sheet. One sec. Great. Got it. Just get in my sheet and I'm not seeing it coming up. Great, here we go. Everybody's seeing the sheet, right? Laurie, you seen it? Yes, I am, Love thank it. you. Great. So tell me what you see in here to analyze it. So at least you could see it and you, you all could talk a little bit. Justin, what 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 is this about? What what, what are you seeing? A spreadsheet, right? Sorry, was it? <laughs> um, well, yes, it's a lunch um, and learn. So great, it's a lunch yeah. and learn. Yes. <laughs> so I'm seeing the region like um, a listing with the the regions um, and if it's pen of people. Mm -hmm. uh, quantity. Sure what, yeah, the quantity, the cost for the item, the amount of the items, the tax that you have to pay on it, and then the total. Great. So what we want, we want to really show, we're going to use, um, well, I'll, I'll tell us what the technique is just now. But those arrows, are we seeing those arrows? Now, those arrows, you're seeing upward and downward, and, you know, you're seeing something across. So you're seeing... Well, that's supposed to be green, but it's looking bluish green. Then you have red, and then you have um, the yellow. So those are arrows. You know, sometimes you need you, you need to analyze the data. This is what we jump into. And the technique that we're going to show is conditional formatting. So conditional formatting with this example, it's known as the icon set rule. Icon set rule. I C O N set rule this icon set rule really tells us anything that is less than 54 dollars that you are making i want to show a downward arrow anything that is up is showing you is showing you what that is between let's say um at 125 well these were different techniques different criteria that i would have used right to show downward upward and going across using a conditional formatting rules. So these arrows, you had to, you could only bring it up if you had to put in the rule, right? So how do I do that? How do I show it? So again, to repeat, these arrows came about when I apply a conditional formatting rule using an icon set rules, icon set rules, that's what it is. So how do you get it? You go to home, everybody. You could look with me. Home, conditional formatting. Yeah, home, conditional formatting. And here you would be seeing icon sets. So I am just to repeat it again. You are seeing conditional formatting. Now, under conditional formatting, you have data bars, you have color scales, and you have icon sets. Right? So all we are saying for now, we want to show the total column that will show um, less than, upward, and a yellow arrow. So the arrows that we're using will be the first one, which is this. You see in three arrows, choose a set of icons that represents the values in the selected cells. Now I had to highlight this first. Yeah. And then I go to what? Jump in anytime. I had to go to conditional formatting. And I'm going to, well, you have data bars, you have color scales, and you have icon sets. 
but I'm going to icon sets first. And I'm going to show the first one, which is this. Three arrows, colored. Yeah. And then you would have gotten all the arrows just coming up just so, right? But you have to set rules now. You have to set rules. So the rules, again, I have to go back to conditional formatting. And I have to go to manage rules. Manage rules. Now, when I go to manage rules... Show formatting rules for the current selection, no problem. Edit the rule, right? So format all cells based on their values. Format all cells based on, which is like what? You see in a value, you see in when value, you see in an upward, you see in lateral yellow, well, I say lateral going across, sorry, and then you see in the downward, which is red. So here is where I'll enter some values. And I will show now the type as being number for both number. So it's coming up as zero, no problem there, but I'm gonna put something. So I'll say, I want to show upward when the value is more than, okay. So when the value is more than 108, right? when the value is more than 108. So I'm changing it up a little bit here. So you all have to look for if this thing is going to work at the upward arrow now that, that is in green, it will only show when it is more than 108. Well, actually I should put 100, right? When it is more than 100, just to, to see something. And I'm going to get it with yellow coming up when it is, less than, well, when it is less than 100, so it's, it's like between, so between 100 and what? Give me a value. So the first one I'm saying, I want a green arrow to appear when the value is more than 100. So if it makes sense, this is supposed to be 108, 216, 323, and 125, those numbers are supposed to come up with a green arrow next to it, right? So then I'll say, all right, yes, good, that's what I want. And I think also 132. So when it is less than 100, but more than 97, it should come up in what? It should come up with the yellow sign. It should come up with the yellow. And anything less than that will be red going down, right? So you don't have to enter the third one. It will be automatic. Anything less than that, that's how it will fill it up. Great. Great. And you see the downward arrow when it's less than 97. So you have going up when the value is less than or equal to 100. When it is less than 100, but more than 97. So in other words, that should be 97 to 100. I will get the yellow arrow going across. And when it is coming down with the red, I should get it less than 97, which should be probably 54. So look up on these rules now, folks, and tell me what should have, what should, what you think will appear. Let me just make sure for those of us who came in, you understand it. The topic is conditional formatting, and I'm trying to show um, this data that I have, which is a data set. So we want to use the jargon. When you have data, it's really a data set. And we said Excel could be is about a million rules. Now you may definitely, no, it's, more, it's, all, it's a little more than a million, but you may want more than that. When you need more than that, Excel can't work to analyze the data set. You will need BI or even Tableau. But now we could use Excel. Excel got a wonderful feature which is known as conditional formatting to analyze data to make decisions. I may want to show downward arrow, this arrow going aside, on the side, upward, downward, side. Yellow, red, and green, well, bluish green. Good. So tell me what numbers will appear, Lavern, according to what I wrote here. 197, yeah. What will I what what am I trying to show with the green, the yellow? What am I trying to show? Okay, we're not hearing you. 
Um, AJ, could we, could we hear you? From my understanding, I think the value 54 should be in red and the 97 should be in yellow and the others should be green. Right, so which one should be green? Anything that is more than 100, right? Right, over, right, correct. So more than 100, so I'm, all right, we will talk after more than 100 and then less than 100, but more than 97. Mm -hmm. Should be yellow. Yellow, great, and anything less than that. 97, which I'm just showing, I'm thinking it's just 54 will cover as red. Yeah. So I'm going to click OK. Right. Well, I had another one. So I think this is the one here. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Correct. Yes. That's what I what you think. What do you think about it? It's a good tool, isn't it? That, definitely. Conditional formatted. So could you walk me through one and I'll do it, I'll do it, but conditional formatting, because uh, to me, I like this too, right? To print it and show somebody something. But before we do conditional formatting, most of us here on this call, I'm sure um, would know, how did I get 54 to come up here? 54 is showing me the amount plus the tax. All right, how did I work out amount? If I am selling pen as being $10 and the cost is $5, what is the amount, the total amount in cost? 50, and how did I work out 50? I said 10 multiplied by five. But what is the formula? You all know how to work out formulas, right? So let me redo this. The formula will be equal. And these are things you know already, right? This is not really data analytics so much. It's just formulas, this part, not the conditional formula. You just click on whatever cell and you go on, you say multiply by five now, right? We know this, right, Tony, AJ? Yes. Right. So you got it as being 50 and I mean, you just fill down, you just fill down and you get all the answers there, right? Great. So you all know about the fill down column. They fill down, just the drag down, right? So here's what now. Conditional formatting again. I want to show. I want to show quantities. Yeah, I want to see upward. Anything more than thirty, you get in. Right. Anything more than thirty, you are getting a upward arrow, which is the green. Anything more than 30, 30 or above. Anything less than, well, between 30, no, no. Between 20 to 30 is yellow. Between 20 to 30 is yellow. And anything less than 20 will be red, right, red. So how to do this? You just walk me through. Somebody just get in the convo. What's the first thing to do? So this is really con conditional formatting, right? That's what we're trying to do, conditional formatting. Right, who will walk me through? And I'll do it, you just tell me how to do it. Thing less than 20 is red down one. Start me, start me up. Conditional formatting, start me up. So the first value will be greater than 30? Yeah, greater than 30, but how, how do we do it? What's, what's the steps? Uh, you first have to uh, select the total, total column. You right, select the so total you set, column. Well, quantity, the quantity column, week, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, the quantity? Yeah, quantity. Okay, for this example, we're using okay. another example. All right. Good. Okay. And what do we do from there? For the con conditional fo conditional formatting. Yeah, right. so you at the top, click the on home, at the top. conditional formatting, right? And we go to icon sets. Mm -hmm. Right. 
and we try these arrows yeah mm -hmm. Do you all want to use another another um, another one? Let's use shapes. So you see the difference that you could use, right? Right. Would this make a difference in your organization? Nikisha, what about in, in project management? Would I use this in project management? In my projects? We um, think I could give you an example. You tell me first. Yeah, you could probably use it to show what areas in the project you're not meeting. Um, the KPIs. Meeting. Yeah. 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 So you may have had some metrics that, okay, which was bringing in more than $20,000 or so are you going over budget or under budget? So yeah, you could yeah. set up your data. But or what I want to do the time. Or if you meeting your time. Set time yeah but, but what what is very important there what you think is very important because this conditional format and once you learn how to do it you could do it but what is the most important aspect in that one the most important aspect is how you set up the data and that's why we keep saying garbage in garbage out so you have to know what data you have to enter because if i didn't have this quantity and pen and paper what the conditional formatting wouldn't really make sense. So you have to set up the spreadsheet or, or capture the data to be able to apply the conditional formatting properly. You with me? Nikisha? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it is a very important tool and you would see it a lot. Have you ever seen these arrows and stuff in Excel like this? I personally have never seen it. I've used conditional formatting before, but I've never used the icon sets. Right. So you probably have used color scales or data bars or one of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I like this and I'm glad you brought it up one time in projects. I like to show it in projects, right? So I may create uh, again. You know, we love to purchase all the different types of tools, but Excel, I mean, what we're showing here today is just is, is just a little very very small thing in even in conditional formatting there's so many different rules that you could apply so excel you know just going off a little bit you have logical functions you have mathematical functions you have the pivot tables you have slicers bowl seats i mean one hour is not enough right we, we have a lot more to learn but let's continue with this what we said indicators right indicators so with the indicators now, so I showed it with what? what? What are the indicators? What's that? I'm seeing as an X. What's this one? Let me go back. That looks like what to me. Warning, caution. A what? Caution, yeah. 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 It's, something, it's something under threat. Mm -hmm. exactly. All right, well, let's do it together, right? Let's do this one. Mm -hmm. And then what? You go back to conditional formatted and then you do manage rules. Yeah, manage rules. You come to edit rule. Now you see in um, the tick is when it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now this yellow is yellow alert. The yellow alert is you know, hey, you gotta watch out, you know, things going to happen. If you don't look out, you will end up crushing your business. So you see, I like this idea also. I love the conditional formatting. That's why I said, let me still um, start this whole convo with conditional formatting because conditional formatting, you know, people like to see colors. You look at a spreadsheet, it looks pretty, it looks nice. Um, you're telling your folks now, your clients, on this is how you could get people with their jobs and, and different rules and responsibilities. You are showing them now, hey, these things, anything that appears in yellow on this spreadsheet, we need to make certain decisions. Otherwise, we're going to be out of business very soon. All right. Or, we, or if you're using it from a project management point, then from a, pro, from a PM point, it may mean that I... I, I this project is not going to, 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 to be successful. It's going to fail. So uh, conditional formatting, think about 
you know, in your examples, all the different ways that this can help you. So I use it in my in my area. I use it for projects. So I'll have the project team now. They will see, they would look at it and say, "All right, you see, this is where with the with the um the alert. Hey, let's make some decisions immediately. Bring it up to your project team. Bring it up to the project manager. We we going to be we're going to be over budget very shortly if we don't do something about it. Simple thing like that. I didn't have to purchase no more project management software." I have Excel, I create the data and I can do it. Of course, I'm a big project management tool person, don't get me wrong. But if you don't have the tool, Excel is excellent for it. I use it in that area. We'll also use it a lot in, um, in business to know that these are the numbers. I might say, okay, we did not make this amount. Um, we, we, if, we, if we just borderline this amount, we all right, but it look like it's an alert that is going to happen here. So we need to make certain decisions. Again, use the data to make decisions. So when the value is what? Mm, more than 30? That's what we were saying, huh? So you have to put a type. Remember you put a type as being number in both. Yeah. The type has been number in both. Tell me again, when the value is what you will see a tick. What value you'll put there? What we said, more than 30, yeah. We have an alert when it is less than 20 and between 20, um, less than 30, but 20. Anything between 20 to 30 coming up with the alert sign, anything more than 30, you're going to get the tick, right? And anything less than zero, you get in the X. Not, not, not less than zero, less than what? Less than 20. Now I did not, I did not enter 20. Did I enter 20 here? No. But how did it come up? Let's understand why. It's only going to allow you with conditional formatting for the icon sets to do two rows. And anything below the second row. The second, uh, the second icon then, which is the third, it will be less than that. But I had to select, I had to go back up here and make sure that I selected it. Great. Mm -hmm. I click okay, let's see what's coming up. Icon set, yes, click okay. Yeah, did it, did it change? Somebody, come in the convo, anybody? anybody? What happened there with that one? Call it. What happened? What is showing you with those three things? Yes. Um, it's showing the exactly what we wanted it to show in terms of the more than 30 is green mm -hmm. and the, um, well, anything else less, the between the 20 and the 30 is um, is yellow and anything less is the red. Right, great, great, great. Good. So this topic is conditional formatting. So what are your key takeaways up until this point? Trishel, could you help us? What are your key takeaways? I mean, you came into our lunch and lunch session. What are your key takeaways so far? All right, we'll come back to you, Joshelle. Justin, what about you? What are your key takeaways uh, up to this point? For me, well, I learned about inputting the formula and how to do the conditional formatting, both for the total with setting these standards, um, the ranges, sorry, and for the quantity also. So it's conditional formatting. Yeah. Okay, but before that, Right, what is the term that we keep using? Conditional formatting is a tool, yes, but it's a tool to help you to do what with the data? Analyze the data. And, yeah, analyze the data. To, well, I will put it in the perspectives of, um, to see how in a business perspective, like the green will show like 
if I could say profits, the yellow will sh um, show like breaking even and the red will show like make uh, running at a loss. Right, exactly, exactly, right? From a business perspective. Yeah. You can yeah. do it in a business. Um, we can talk the term spotlight, you know, uh, with the yellow, uh, yellow is spotlight. We have to do something about it. Otherwise we will be over budget. So I use, I like to use this, the X, um, these icons when I'm doing it in projects. I don't know, something about it where they, they, they are alert. I guess it's just me in projects. But of course, this is conditional formatting. Now with analytics, because that's what Excel here is teaching us to do. Again, this is just a little 10 minutes. This is a lot more, right? Excel will teach you to do what with analytics? You're leaving here making sure you understand these four terms. Data gathering, data analysis, data representation and decision making. So data gathering, data analysis, data representation, and decision making, decision making. Now me saying those four terms, data gathering, data analysis, and all of us who know me in project management here will know I always, I, I preach this, right? I love those areas, data gathering, data analysis, data representation, and the other one is decision making. But what I'm asking now with data gathering, how will you get this data? How will you get this? How will you enter the data, data gathering? You have to Reports enter it, right? Receipts. What do you say, Justin? From? Reports and receipts. Yeah, it might be human resource also. Well, not in this example, but HR. Yeah. Think about it because you have HR analytics. Now I use it for project analytics. I'll use it for facilities management analytics because FM is my area, FM and PM and business, right? But so I'll, I'll use it in all different capacities. That's what I'm trying to see. So data gathering, you have to enter the data. Somebody have to enter the data. So this is how you could have roles and responsibilities of people for people using a tool. Just um, last week, we were discussing that plenty of people want to use all these different tools and you're not... It's not doing what it's supposed to be doing because I, I tell people you're using it wrong. I could show you how to do all the formulas and all of this, but it's not going to be successful if it is not tying to what the overall business objectives of the organization wants. You have to ask, what are the questions? What do you want? Right? And then you see what tool will match. So when you are doing it, you are asking people, how am I going to gather the data? You have to enter the data. Now, once you enter the data, what we have just shown with conditional formatting, would it be analysis? Would it be representation? Or would it be decision making? What do you think? Representation. Because you saw the arrows. You yeah. saw the arrows. Right. So definitely, I will say the conditional helps you to visualize the data, which is data representation. Um, but from that, I had to analyze it now. Now, really and truly, you, if you look at it, if, I mean, this is a little bit of data, of course, and I didn't have to do conditional formatting. I could have just used my eyes, look at it and say, okay, well, anything more than 54, it bad or it good, right? That is analysis that you are an analyzing it using your basic eye, right? Looking at the data. But Excel itself, the tool, is conditional formatting that really analyze the data for you, you know. And by, when you analyze the data, you are able to represent it using these arrows. So the tool is analytics. That's, that's the tool, Excel is the analytical tool. It's doing the analysis work for us. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's doing the anal analysis tool for us. And then you have to represent it. So it is automatically representing it for you. Because I could have done this on pen and paper and draw up my arrows and all of that. That's representation. And then when I look at it, as you said, Justin, you will make a decision in what to do. In what to do. Great. So data gathering, data um, analysis, data representation. And the last one was decision making. What decision that you will do. Great. Um, just a question, I don't know if I'm asking out of turn, but is it possible to put that data in, say, a, um, a, a chart of some kind, okay. a pie chart, maybe to say what percent is in green, what yellow, and what red? So we is could it do it possible to get that from here. 
Right, so let's do a chart. Let's do a chart, three. So to do a chart, what we're seeing, we could look at highlighting it. Then you go to insert, you said, right? Um, chart, right? Now the charts, where's my charts? Recommended chart. Um, let's just choose one. Mm -hmm. Instagram. Right, so you're seeing a chart here, but it's not really making too much of sense as now. Right, but let me um, choose certain columns. The columns that I could probably choose is product and total. Let me choose two columns. And then I will go to insert charts. I'm looking for a chart that will be simple to see the information in your see. Columns, right? Try, try a pie chart. Or, all right, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I was saying that. Can... Right. Yeah, but you are asking something again, Tony, if you could get, because this is a basic chart and just showing me pen and this is how much you made like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, what, what I was thinking of is to get the per percent of how many are yellows, how many red and uh, the, the amount which is green, the per percent. So, of, of each Somewhere on the chart. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Somebody saying something. A pie, let's try a pie chart. I was just wondering if it would be better represented by a pie chart. Okay. Mm -hmm. I could have just chosen it. Okay, so let's go to pie, right? This is my pie chart. Now, what you all are asking, now, I, I did it to show you all that, I mean, it's garbage in, garbage out. So I have to have that data first to be able to do it, mm -hmm. right? So this is showing you pen, paper, and how much is the quantity. But I want to do a little something. I want to chart. Now, you have insert. You could ask the drawing. total cost. That's the total cost. No? Total cost, yeah. This is the total cost of each product. Yeah, the total cost or how much money I made or whatever, but this is the total of each product, right? Um, let me just get it again, not data. This is the chart, right? Select data. You could change the chart type if you want. All right, so you have these things here. Switch row column. No, this is a row. So you wanted to show the number for the percentage of that had red or green. You wouldn't be able to show that on the chart. Tell me again, um, Tony, what you wanted to see. Is Tony was asking that, right? Was asking that? Uh, yes, yeah, I was asking that. All right, so you were asking, you, you wanted to see all the reds, the total what number. Yeah, what per percent each of those three cat categories, each of them made up? Right, like, you wouldn't get that in a chart. Was it ten percent red? 50 yes, green yeah, 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 yeah. You had to have that data somewhere first, and then it will be able ah. to pull. Then it will be able okay. to pull. But since Just you're showing, time. we're showing, yeah, we're showing chart one time. No problem, charts. So a basic chart now. What it will show me, I could just highlight for those of us. I can just highlight the product, get the total. I highlighted the two, and here's my chart. I can fancy it up now by going to where? Chart design, change colors if I want.
Did I change any color? Ooh. Pick layout. Could add a chart element. Now I want to add some chart elements. That's what I wanted to do. Chart title above the chart, which is total here. I took it out. Let me get back again. Add chart, add chart title, which is example. Right, so I could fancy it up, add my add my title. So for those of us when you, you do your charts, that was the purpose of the chart again. What type of tool will you say the chart is? Is this data gathering, data analysis, data representation, or decision making? Data representation. Representation. But you were saying all of them are huh? how's the analysis as well. Right, so the tool is data analysis. Excel on the whole, whatever we're showing is the analytical tool. And the end result of the analytical tool is to be able to visualize it. And how you're visualizing it would be in a chart format here. Now, and we, what we're saying is that we could, we could fancy it up, right? Now, after you do the chart, you come to add chart elements. Uh, I want us to remember that you have your chart title. Um, could I have type access? Yes, primary vertical. So this is the primary vertical. And what was this? This was total sales. Is this sales or cost we're dealing with here? If? Isn't it cost we're dealing with? Yeah, cost, cost. Well, I say sales. You mean the, the 54 and thing, right? No, because I'm just looking at the, the actual spreadsheet and it's represented as cost. So that's why I was getting a little confused. What do you mean? What do you mean? No, the, the spreadsheet has the, the column heading as cost. So I'm to, I thought it's been dealing with cost here, item cost. Over here, cost, you see? The, in column E, the heading is cost. Column E? E, yeah, E, E, E. Right, so I'm saying, you, you're saying um, something that I'm seeing. Right, so I'm seeing cost. So I'm getting confused when I hear you say sales. That's why I'm asking, because it just says, I thought it's cost being represented here. Okay, I get you. So let me just say total cost, right? Total cost here, the cost. Because that's what it is. This is this column here. 0, 050, yeah. This this is total column H is what is represented here, you know. Right. Right, correct. And then pen, paper, and all of that, that would have been those are the product. products, correct. All right. So I'll go back now. All right, so I came out how to do it go back to what I must select the chart I must select the chart and then I do what insert well, if I insert I'm not seeing it yeah okay I go to chart design chart design. chart design then I go to add chart element and when you see I think it was axis title primary horizontal. So you see in the horizontal below, click and you add a um, product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I have a nice fancy chart here. Can I could go back to add chart title, data labels, Data table, well, the data table would have been, was the data table this? You know, to pull the data from. Do I have grid lines? Yeah, I'm seeing grid lines now if I wanted it. Trend lines. All right, so this is moving average. This is when we come, when this is all part of statistical, right? But we have to learn the statistical in order to do this, which is part of Excel analytics, doing statistical modeling, right? And so 
we have lots to do with Excel, right? So on the analytics, we will learn how to do solver. You could do slice in the work. Uh, a big, big part is power pivot, right? And all the different things that you could do with pivot. Then you actually have data analytic tools, more data analytic tools, which is this statistical part, which is ANOVA. But I'll just explain how to get that before we close. I just want you all to know there's so much more. Right, so great. So I'll stop here with the, the chart part. But to get your chart, you just highlight anything and you do what? You go to what? Insert. And as part of what you were saying, you everybody just select whatever you want, whatever type of chart, that's it. You'll get it. Then you must go to chart design. And on the chart design, you've got format, you could change color. Look at right here, change chart type. The type of chart, um, you could come to a funnel. I wonder what funnel look. Tree map. Oh, you have so many different charts. Stock, area, all these different things. So many different things here. Yeah. Right, and I could just change it if I wanted it. Great. Good. Now, I'm going back to home. Now, there is, for those of us who get in a little more involved in analytics, which is all of us here, I'm sure, want to, there is something on the tab that I want us to look for, right? I'm going to file. You're supposed to see on the home now. You're supposed to see data, it's data and analytics here, yeah, but I'm not seeing that. And you may not see it just like that in your Excel either. You have to go to file more. It's an add on, right? File more options and add in, sorry. File more options, add ins. Yeah. And you will see now analysis tool pack, right? Analysis tool pack. Then you click OK. And you're supposed to see a tab coming up here, but I'm not seeing it coming up on mines now. Let me see what I was doing different. Data analysis, analytical tools. File, I think I missed out a step. File more, did I do it? File more options, add in. Right, yeah, over here, bottom of the screen here. Analysis tool pack, and you have to show Excel add-ins. Yes, it's an add-in, and you click go. Right, here we go. Analysis tool pack, and I click OK. You'll not see it coming up at all, probably on hidden somewhere. And try it one time again more. File more options. Add in analysis toolbox. Yes, that's it. Manage Excel add-ins. Click go. Right, the tool pack is ticked. You're supposed to click OK. All right, but there's another tab, folks that will give me data analysis and you'll see all the different tools that I could use, which is with hypothesis, statistical, ANOVA, but it does not appear just like that, right? On your screen, I'm sure it is right here and I'm not seeing it now. Formulas. Right, look, it's here. So it was on the data, sorry. Data analysis, right? So is it, these are your data analysis tools. And you will have it right here. These are things that you will have to learn. 
under ANOVA, single factor, correlation, covariance, descriptions, statistics, a lot of things that we could do with data. This is REL, REL analysis, heavy analysis, right? With statistical uh, other things, statistical examples. So how did you how did you, do we get this? This is an add-in, right? It, a lot of times it's not there. You have to go to file, you go to more, you go to options, you go to add-ins, analysis tool pack. I'm not seeing that on your screen, your movement on the screen. I probably stop sharing. Yeah. Let me get it back. Where's my screen now? Resume share. See now? Now, yes. Great. So I go to file. I go to more. Options. File more options. Add-ins. Excel add-ins. Well, I had to go first to analysis tool pack. I'll make sure it's analysis tool pack. Then I go to Excel add-ins, go, go. This comes up analysis tool pack, which is okay. And then you go to you go back to data on the menu, and you'll see data analysis appearing here. And when I click on it, I'll see different things that I'm able to do. Moving average is one of them. That, that is a statistical one. You have regression sampling. Some of us would have heard about these terms already. What I'm trying to show is that Excel got all the features and sometimes you go and you purchase all the different products and it doesn't, I mean, you have it right here that you could use it. And it's much, it's very user-friendly. Well, Microsoft BI Business Intelligence is also very user-friendly, but you have to purchase that and when people have Excel that you could use it. So key takeaways, because I'm looking at the time already and we already went over one. Right, as our nice lunch and learn. And I know Justin had lunch, so he's finished lunch and he's ready to return to work. So sum up what you have learned for the last hour with us here. I mean, we, we just we just touch on something here. So much more to show. Yeah, who who who's summing it up for us? Sum it, sum it up first, please. Recap. Thank you. Who was volunteering to do it? Justin, you again? Or Joanne? AJ? Okay, um, well, even before we get to, to focus on that, I want to make the point and reiterate, as you have been doing throughout the session, that the, the, the garbage and garbage out. So the, the data and the source of the data is key. And based on the data, of course, so we have to focus, put emphasis on the data gathering, because based on that, we then will be able to do our analysis and the representation out of which we can then make our decisions. We have the tool Excel, which as you explained to us, of course there are other, other tools that compete, but at the same time, given that we already have Excel, it provides us, most of us in terms of our organizations and our needs, it provides us what we need to be able to you know, share and represent the data for whether it be project management or you know, whatever kind of um, different, organizations within the company. So it is something that we already have that we can use. And today really exposed us and taught us conditional formatting and the rule, that rule using the icon set specific, uh, that specific rule, the icon set rule. And I see the value of it in the sense that because we could use those directional, the arrows or the shapes or whatever, whatever we want to call them, they really, I see the value in terms of a dashboard because re, for example, if you have your weekly meetings, the status updates, you know, as, as a snapshot, if I use this, it, it is, is a visual for everybody at, from, you know, you, just at a glance, you can say, okay, fine, we look okay here, or this is an area of concern, you know, potential risk or potential exposure. So uh, I like it for that, from that perspective. That's at least what I get from, that from the session. Okay, great yeah. conditional formatting. And as you said, we could build um, dashboards with it, right? We could build dashboards with it. So, uh, what we also wanted to show, so you sum it up really good. 
and analytics yes and of course you have your graphs and there's so much that you could do more with your graphs some of us would have known about these graphs already but what you could do with the graphs you can actually do formatting with the graphs right which we showed all on the chart design and you could change it up many different things you could do with it so we just touch a little bit on that here but i just wanted to point out you have an add-in so most of us wouldn't have may not have known that i don't know if you may have known it that you have a data analysis um, part of the menu, which is an add-in, right? You, had to, you have to place it on the ribbon in order to show it. It wouldn't just appear just like that. It's an add-in in Microsoft Excel. And here is where you have all the statistical areas to do. You have variance. We would use a lot of ANOVA, and we definitely will use a lot of um, statistical sampling like regression, so you have all of this data and you could do all of these things. So it's really, really good stuff, right? I hope that you see it's really good stuff. There's also something known as the power pivot. Now pivot tables, lots of great information with pivots. You could do what if scenarios, goal seek. It's a lot, a lot, a lot more. Questions, anyone? Because I mean, I, as I looked at the time, persons have to get back to work and all of that. So it's just it was just to share a couple of things in the hour. And I hope that you all are leaving with more knowledge in Excel and at least to make you want to learn more with the tool. That, that was my intention, to make you want to learn something in the hour that, you know, you could have your lunch and come, come with us or like me, have my coffee and, you know, talk a little bit and then, you know, have a thirst for more knowledge and, and see what else is out there. So thank you, everybody. If there are no questions, are there any questions? Tony, question? No, no, I was just waiting to say thank you very much. Uh, it was done so very clearly. I haven't done this part, um, this part before and I feel like I know it. So it's just to use it now. So thank you very much. And there are many more things, right? So I'll invite you back to another lunch and learn where we will show the power pivot, right? I'll do the pivot. And then we ha I have an upcoming training session that I'm sure you all will sign up for. But we will do another lunch and learn. Um, this Thursday, we have another lunch and learn, which is what the Tobago Festival. Um, next week, we have, because it's Diwali, we have in about henna. Yeah, um, yeah. As I'm saying it wrong, Mahindi, right? Henna and Mahindi. And then the next week, I'll come back and do another Excel. And then we have projects and all different things. So look forward to seeing you back every week. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.